A lot of people say that science shows that men should avoid soy because it'll mess with their hormones and also cause the growth of breast tissue, aka gynecomastia, aka moops. And today I am going to get into the latest science around that to give you a definitive answer about whether soy actually messes with men's hormones. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time researcher with my PhD, here to share scientific studies to help you reach your nutrition, health, wellness, and fitness goals. And I've gotten this question a lot about whether soy causes hormone issues, especially in men, and it seems like the perfect time to answer it now because a study came out recently that is a meta-analysis that can really help us get to the bottom of this. And a meta-analysis is the gold standard of research for trying to figure out what the truth is among a bunch of studies saying different things. And this meta-analysis covers 40 different studies with over 1,700 men in it, so it can give us a really good answer about what the real effect is in terms of how soy affects men's hormones across all these different studies. But before I get into that meta-analysis and the real answer to all this, I'm going to give you some background on why it is thought that soy messes with men's hormones. So most of the evidence for that idea comes from case studies. And a case study is pretty much the opposite of a meta-analysis. So a case study is usually one doctor or a group of doctors who are not scientists at all, not trained to be scientists, not PhDs, nothing like that, who have a weird patient or a very exceptional patient that is worth publishing on, and then they'll pretty much just talk about their observations with the patient and their opinions on what is causing the patient's issues. And one of these case studies that suggested that soy was causing problems was a 19-year-old male vegan was having problems with hypogonadism, which is low drive. And the case study reported that he ate a lot of soy, and so it must have been the soy that messed with his drive. And another case study had a 60-year-old man with gynecomastia, aka enlargement of breast tissue, who drank three quarts of soy milk per day. So in both of these cases, changing their diets made the issues go away, but they didn't just specifically target the soy in the diet change, so it's not actually clear exactly what was causing the problem, especially in that first case study, because it was not an actual experiment, it was not scientific, it's more of an observational report. But interestingly, both of the subjects of each of these case studies happened to eat a similar amount of soy in terms of soy isoflavones. And soy isoflavones are the component of soy that is most thought to cause potential hormone differences. And both of the subjects of these case studies happened to eat around 360 milligrams of soy isoflavones. And to break that down for how much soy that actually is, that is equivalent to 60 cups of soy milk per day, which is about 6,000 calories of soy milk, or six cups of tofu per day, which is about 1,200 calories. That's also equivalent to 18 one ounce scoops of pure soy protein powder for about 1800 calories. So you would have to be quite committed to eating soy to get that many soy isoflavones in your diet per day. So now onto the meta-analysis, which as a reminder is the gold standard. It's like a study of studies. So you have the study experimental level with a bunch of randomized controlled trials and actual interventions where they feed people soy for a certain amount of time. And these individual 40 studies and this meta-analysis takes these original 40 studies and does another analysis across all of them to figure out what the true effect across all these different studies are. And all 40 of these studies, with over 1,700 men in them, looked at the effects of eating soy or soy isoflavones on hormones in men. And for those of you who are interested in the specific hormones involved, they looked at total testosterone, free testosterone, estradiol, estrone, and sex hormone binding globulin. You don't need to know any of this if you're not interested in the specific hormones though. In this meta-analysis, they looked for effects overall of soy and soy isoflavones on all these different hormonal parameters, and they also broke it down by the duration, so how long the exposure to soy was, as they say, so how long the researchers made people eat soy, and also how much soy they ate per day. But first, just for the overall effect across all the studies, regardless of how long or how much soy they ate, they found that soy and soy isoflavones did not affect a single one of these hormones across all 40 of these studies. And in fact, the closest effect to being statistically significant was a very tiny increase in testosterone from eating soy. So if anything, 
the closest little trend was that soy slightly increased testosterone, which would be the opposite of what you would expect if soy were actually having feminizing effects on men. But again, this was not significant at all, so it is not causing any real changes in testosterone. It's just definitely not reducing it. And then they broke it down to look at the effects of eating soy for less than 12 weeks versus more than 12 weeks, and found that the people who ate soy for more than 12 weeks had no more hormone changes than the people who ate soy for less than 12 weeks. So again, it was a whole lot of nothing. And then they looked at people who ate more than 75 milligrams worth of soy isoflavones versus less than 75 milligrams. And to put that in perspective for you, that is equivalent to about 12 cups of soy milk or 1.3 cups of tofu per day. And when you compare studies who gave men less than 75 milligrams of soy isoflavone per day versus more than 75 milligrams, there were no differences again. So did not matter even if you had more than 12 cups of soy milk a day, there were still no effects on men's hormones overall across all these studies. And here's a fun little intermission fact. Did you know that beer contains a phytoestrogen, which is what people say is bad about soy, that in the case of beer actually stimulates the release of prolactin, which causes breast tissue enlargement. So if you are worried about soy, then you should actually be just as worried, if not more worried about beer. And I feel like this is both a useful way to put things in perspective and a wonderful comeback if you're ever getting attacked or being told that soy causes hormone issues in men and you should avoid it, you can tell those people that, well, they better be avoiding beer if they actually care about this issue. And before I get to my final scientist conclusion on what you should do about soy if you're male, I'm first going to do some very brief comments on study quality things for people who are interested in the sciency aspect. So first, the heterogeneity of the meta-analysis was low, which is a fancy way to say that it's a very high quality meta-analysis because the studies were very comparable. So they used similar variables, similar outcomes, and were just very appropriate to be grouped together in this way, which is nice to see. And for another note, I do want to say that one of these authors is very into soy, like he is a big time soy researcher, that is his line of research, which I would hope for someone writing a meta-analysis on soy, but he does consult for soy companies. so or companies that produce soy-based products. But I wanna put your fears at rest because with a meta-analysis, this soy guy was not involved in collecting the data. So that data is just from a bunch of publicly available studies. You or I, or the peer reviewers who reviewed this meta-analysis could go and get that data and do the meta-analysis ourselves and confirm the same result. So this meta-analysis was not funded by anyone. It did not involve him collecting data. And he's just a big time soy researcher who consult probably because he's an expert on it. But just wanted to share that in case you are concerned about that kind of thing, which I am definitely for studies that are actually funded by different food groups. And now for my official recommendation for what to do about soy intake if you are male. I think that you should enjoy your soy, but as with everything, don't eat it in excess. I think this is just another great example of how we shouldn't be relying too much on any one food. We should vary our diets up because who knows what the next big crazy finding will be, you know. And this fact is also made very clear in my recent video on dangers that are lurking in some of our favorite health foods. Uh, if you missed that, go check it out. So if your diet already includes a lot of tofu and soy protein powder, then maybe choose almond milk or some other kind of plant-based milk instead of soy milk. You know, just vary things up if you can. My camera died, and then by the time it got charged up again, it was after sunset, because <laughs> my camera is seven years old and kind of sucks. Um, but yeah, to now wrap up on a different day, to answer the question of whether soy might give you moves or cause any other sort of unfortunate male issues, these studies in this meta-analysis strongly suggest that no, they will not cause these kinds of issues. And that is because Things like gynecomastia are caused by imbalances of testosterone and estrogen. And so if soy were to cause gynecomastia, it would almost certainly do so, at least in part, through changing your testosterone levels or estrogen levels. But this meta-analysis shows that soy does not change men's levels of testosterone or estrogen or any of the other hormones that we talked about. Therefore, soy almost certainly does not cause gynecomastia, at least in less than massive amounts. And so the takeaway from this video is that soy is not dangerous at all for you as a man if you eat it in normal amounts. And 
If you eat it in absolutely massive amounts, there's a tiny chance it could maybe cause problems in some people, but we don't know yet. But it's just a general principle of good nutrition that you shouldn't rely too much on any one food or eat massive amounts of any one thing. Because even something as healthy and good for you as water can actually kill you in large amounts. So general principle, don't go crazy, soy included, the end. <laughs> I hope this video answered your question. If you had this question, and at the very least, I hope it gave you some debate fodder if anyone ever comes at you saying that soy is terrible for men. Please let me know what you think in the comments below, and if you liked the video, please, please share and like it. It makes a big difference for me. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to stay updated on my videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.